Hello, gorgeous. You're listening to The Girlfriend's Guide to Starting Over. On this podcast, we talk about everything from dating and relationships to personal development. We also speak very candidly about the F word, and by that, I mean failure. So grab a pen, tag a friend, and let's talk about it. All of it. Undergoing, overcoming, and simply trying to make it through. Hello, gorgeous. You're listening to the Girlfriend's Guide to Starting Over podcast, and I'm your host, Kayla. And in this episode, we are going to dive into something that I was recently introduced to. In the moment that I heard it, I was like, oh my gosh, my audience needs to know this. Like, I have to tell this to them. And it is called the IKEA effect. And we do this without even realizing that we're doing it in our romantic relationships, sometimes in our friendships, oftentimes in our careers. Like we do this and it is to our detriment. And so the Ikea effect is the, it's the process of overvaluing or overselling something because we've invested work into it. If you're not familiar with Ikea, it is one of my favorite stores. I am hands down an Ikea fanatic. Take a step into my apartment and you will look around and you'll know that. And it's because I love putting in a little elbow grease, giving stuff a little bit of character. If you shop at Ikea, you can get really cool furniture at a really decent price because you have to put it together yourself. Now you can pay for assembly, but where's the fun in that? So you get to bring your package home, you pull out all the pieces and these instructions, and you put the furniture together yourself. And often, if you're also an Ikea person, you know I'm telling the truth, you put something together and it's almost done. And without fail, you always realize that you've got something in upside down. And so you're faced with that challenge of, do I flip this over, take it all apart and start over? Or are we just going to be very careful with this furniture piece? (laughs) So anybody else out there who can resonate, I'm sure you're laughing alongside me. So regardless, when a visitor comes over and they see your coffee table, your bookshelf, your chair, your whatever from Ikea, almost always they are going to rate that piece of furniture around a seven, a six or seven. They're like, "Eh, it's, it's nice. It'll do. Like it does the job, right? However, the owner of this piece is going to rate it at a 10. They're going to say strong nine, strong 10, especially if they've got all the pieces in the right place. Why? Because they put in work, because there's an attachment to it because of the sweat equity that they have put into the piece. So they're always going to see it at a higher value than someone who is watching by. So who is accurate? The visitor is the accurate person. Let's just be real. And that doesn't say that your sweat equity doesn't mean anything, but just in the grand scheme of things, an Ikea piece of furniture is an Ikea piece of furniture. And I said from the beginning, I'm not knocking it because I love Ikea, but it is what it is. We do this in relationships as well. And in this podcast episode, we are specifically going to talk about romantic relationships, But when you get the premise of this, you'll be able to see how it applies to all your other relationships. So we have a girl, right? And let's say she goes on a date with a guy who is really, really wealthy. He sends a car for her. There are flowers already in the car. She arrives to the restaurant. He has made reservations. They have the best table in the house. He asks her what she wants to eat. He orders for her. He's allowing her to get, you know, an appetizer, an entree and a dessert. He gets the most exquisite bottle of wine. Like he's literally whining and dining her. He sends a car to take her home. He texts to make sure that she made it in the house okay. Like he literally does all the things and she's just along for the ride, taking it all in. And then three nights later, she goes out with a guy who she met on Tinder or another swiping app, maybe even a guy who's been hanging around the office. He tells her, you know what? I think you are gorgeous. You're the most beautiful thing. And I'm just really on hard times right now. So I'm a musician. I'm going to play this guitar right here on Musician's Corner. If you will, 
All you have to do is hold the hat and I will take all of our earnings and we are going to go get something amazing. So he plays a guitar and he's singing her love songs and everybody is smiling as they walk by. They're tossing money in the hat that she's holding and she's grinning from ear to ear. And he's like, oh, look at this, babe. We've got enough money to grab a burger, hit Jenny's ice cream. And then they stroll around the park and she is just in complete awe of his vocals and the music and the experience. And then she has to take an Uber or hop on the bus. She gets home. He doesn't text her because his cell phone is dead. But the next morning, he's like, last night was amazing. Last night was great. Ultimately, almost always, as women, we choose the guy who played the guitar. And yes, I had to pause and take a deep breath because I've been that girl. We choose the guy who plays the guitar. Why? Because we were caught up in the moment. We were whisked away in the opportunity to build something with him. We were a part of it. We were totally involved. And so we rate this experience higher than we rated our date with a rich guy because it caused us or it required for us to do something. That is the Ikea effect. And we see this in our relationships where we've been dating someone for a really long time where it's been on again, off again. Perhaps you are the baby mama. Perhaps you are the girlfriend that just never really goes away you're, or you're the one that got away that they won't leave alone. Regardless, I have heard so many times, and there was a time when I said this, I'm so glad that I'm gone from that, that point now, but where you'd say, I've put in so much work, I don't want someone else to get what I've put in. Or you say, oh, well, he's not that bad. It's, we've been through so much together. I really need to hang on. And we end up sacrificing everything that could be because of the sweat equity that we have put into this relationship. And so I just want you to know that that's a real thing. That's an Ikea effect. And I'm not saying that men have to be filthy rich or that they have to have all these things. What I am saying is that so often we miss out on opportunities or we pass on opportunities because we are used to the struggle. We are used to the, the grind. We are used to having to put in work to prove our keep, to prove that we're worthy, to prove that I'm a girl that you are, that's worth fighting for. When you happen upon the person who you are designed to be with, it does not require struggle. You're not going to have to prove that you're worthy. You're not going to have to prove that he is, he should choose you. It's just going to happen for you. And I'm just going to drop that right there. We're going to stop here because I could go on and rant forever and ever and ever. But I can say to you that when you change your mindset, like I had no idea that this is what it was when I did it. When you change your mindset and you start dating differently, when you start interrupting those patterns of having to be active in that process, active in that pursuit, because as feminine women, that's not what we have to do everything will change for you. I hope that this helps. I hope that it brought some realization to some people, grounded somebody, because it totally shifted my mindset. And I'm like, man, my girls need to hear this. I love you, girl. And we'll chat in the next one. Well, gorgeous girl, that's a wrap for this episode. I hope you found value, insight, or strength. I hope something was said that gave you the courage to push on a little while longer toward the life of your dreams. If you felt motivated during this segment, screenshot this and throw it in your stories and tag me on social. That way we can keep the message going. Have an excellent day on purpose and we girl will talk in the next one.